Elon Musk finally unveiled his plan to make super intelligent monkeys. You know, a monkey has been able to control the computer with his brain. Just, yeah. <laughs> Just, you know, as you do. <laughs> Elon's such a badass, he's like, I don't know what you guys are doing, but over on my side, we're making monkeys control computers. What's up everyone? Thanks for checking this out. Uh, I'm gonna go over Neuralink's big announcement and tell you what my big takeaways were, why I'm so excited about it, and what the big overarching questions are about the implications for future society. This is Knee of the Curve. If this is your first time on my channel, I make videos on futurism and tech and biohacking, but also stand-up comedy and filmmaking. So if you like any of those things, maybe hit that subscribe. Either way, here's Elon explaining Neuralink. I've, I've said a lot about AI over the years, uh, but I, I think even in a benign AI scenario, we will be left behind. Um, and so, and hopefully it is a benign scenario, um, but I think with um, a high bandwidth brain machine interface, I think we can actually go along for the ride. Um, and we can effectively have the option of merging with AI. And that is Neuralink's grand mission. Just like SpaceX's grand mission is to save humanity from the existential crisis of being stuck on one planet, make us a multi-planetary species, just like Tesla's grand mission is to save humanity from the existential threat of global climate change and get us off of fossil fuels, just like the Boring Company's grand mission is to save humanity from existing in boredom. It works. Anyway, Neuralink's grand mission is to save humanity from the existential vulnerability of being wiped out by artificial intelligence. And in the meantime, make us fucking awesome! It will enable anyone who wants to have superhuman cognition. Anyone who wants. Anyone who wants. Elon made sure to mention that a couple of times in the beginning of the presentation. This is, this is not a mandatory thing. Um, this is a thing that you can choose to have if you want. I do want to emphasize that it's not going to be like suddenly uh, Neuralink will have this incredible neural lace and start taking over people's brains. Elon, just, nobody thought that. It's cool, it's cool, just, you know, just try not to scare them. It, it will take a long time. <laughs> um, so, and, and, and you'll see it coming. So getting, getting FDA approval for implantable or devices of any kind is quite, quite difficult. Um, and this will be a slow process where we will gradually increase the um, issues that we solve until ultimately we, we can do a full uh, brain machine interface. Uh, meaning that we can, yeah, this is gonna sound pretty weird, but um, achieve a sort of symbiosis with artificial intelligence. Neuralink's gonna be the gateway, the roads, the on-ramp to the internet, but the destination, the cities, those are still gonna be indexed by Google. So if Neuralink is the roads, Google is the earth. Isn't it interesting how even in cyberspace, all Elon's companies have to do with travel? Anyway, if you're like me, you're in. You don't want to be riding a horse on the information superhighway when you can be rolling in a Tesla. Unfortunately, Neuralink is for monkeys only. Right now, first human trials start at the earliest next year. But we're getting ahead of ourselves. I haven't even showed you the first product. It's called the N1. Could it be an homage to the Apple one? Who cares? It's a four x five millimeter chip attached to a thousand single digit micron thin threads. If you're gonna go stick something in your brain, you, you, you want it to not be giant, uh, you want it to be tiny. These threads are physically way too small for any human to physically do the implantation. And instead of building a shrink ray to shrink down neurosurgeons, which I think they totally missed the mark on, they built a robot. You, you really need this to be done with a robot because it's very tiny and it needs to be very precise. So you don't, and you don't want to pierce a blood vessel so when you so each thread, the, the robot looks 
looks sort of basically through a microscope and in inserts each electrode specifically. As you can see, the brain's surface moves with the heartbeat and breathing. The robot tracks and adjusts for this movement. Bypassing you know, any kind of like blood vessel and making sure the inserted without causing trauma um, or minimal trauma. Yeah, it's not zero, but um, you won't notice it. That's the important part. So the thing that these nanowires are trying to detect is the spikes in the neurons. So the neuron will have a fluctuation, but here and there it'll spike up. And that's when the neuron is actually creating an action. It happens all the time and there's bazillions of neurons. So it takes an AI capable of decoding what all this crazy noise actually means. This N1 chip has a thousand times more electrodes than the current technology, which is called the Utah Array, which is in use already with about 20 patients and has been able to produce awesome stuff, like they can move a cursor around the screen, uh, text messaging, things like that. So a thousand times more electrodes than that. The N1 also has no external wires. That connects wirelessly through the skin to a wearable device that we call the Link, which contains a Bluetooth radio and a battery. It'll be controlled through an iPhone app. You won't have to go to a doctor's office and have them have an exotic programmer to, uh, to configure it. The first human trial is going to be focused on quadriplegic patients, but they were very clear that there was going to be use cases for a lot of different diseases and enhancement. One of the coolest parts of the presentation was when Elon brought up Philip Sabes. Sabes, I'm probably butchering that. He talked all about what their goals are and what the potential of a Neuralink could be. The clinical device that people can take home and use on their own, we think the people will be able to get naturalistic control over the computers, not just a mouse, but also a keyboard, game controllers, and potentially other devices. A person could imagine running or dancing or even kung fu, and we would be able to decode that signal. The ability to control, say, for example, a 3D avatar that they could use for online gaming or sports. It could allow them to control a wide range of assistive robotic devices. And ultimately, if and when the technology for spinal cord, nerve, or muscle stimulation gets far enough, ultimately, it could be used to restore that individual's control of their own body. And not only just reading the information coming from the brain, but writing information to the brain. Now to some of you, that may seem a little bit fantastical that you could write information into the brain. It turns out if you pass a tiny amount of current through that electrode, what happens is that you activate cells nearby to restore the sense of touch or to restore vision so that we can actually create rich visual feedback for the blind. What Neuralink wants to do is to give people the ability both to repair broken brain circuits and also to ultimately give us better access to better connections to the world, to each other, and to ourselves. Just say superpowers. Come on. One of the things I love about watching these presentations is listening to the people who are so into the data and the jargon of their expertise that you literally have no idea what they're talking about. We custom designed stimulation engine for electrical stimulation that can coexist alongside our analog pixels. Uh-huh. Our stimulation engine has 0.2 microamp of amplitude resolution and 7.8 microsecond of time resolution. Yup. And we can also stimulate any combination of 64 channels at the same time. Super tight. Tight, 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 tight. It makes me feel smarter even just listening to him. I also like how Elon describes Neuralink as a different kind of artificial or super intelligence that than we normally think about. Like we, I think normally people think about a super intelligence, an AI, like something separate from us that we can talk to, that's maybe like an assistant that we ask questions, it's sort of like an oracle and we get to sort of tap into it um, and we're separate from it. And this version of AI is literally every human would be a node in the system. And yes, there would be a huge amount of intelligence built in to the network, but the network itself would be directed by every one of the little nodes. We'd, each person would be like a neuron in this like global brain. 
um, which I mean is kind of weird to think about just in itself. Like, what are we going to be some sort of hive mind? Um, I mean, it would make it would make synchronized dancing super easy. Think about those musicals that uh, you see just people in randomly just getting out of their cars and singing and dancing in unison and you're like, man, that's cheesy. Nope, sci-fi. Apparently. Near the end, Elon talks about what it's going to be like communicating to someone else who's outfitted with a Neuralink. You, you could actually communicate at the at a sort of complex meme structure level, really have like potentially a new kind of communication. Um, it's sort of a, a con conceptual uh, telepathy, essentially. I mean, we'll probably be able to communicate great with animals. I can talk to dogs, fool. There's just so many questions that this type of technology opens up. I mean, the kind of things that we won't even need anymore, like cell phones, laptops, uh, screens of any kind. If you can just beam a screen in front of your face uh, using your neural link and augmented reality, AR, I mean, it's just all happening in your brain. Vacations, you will literally not need to take a vacation. You could live a whole other life in a virtual world. Other sort of crazy consequences that could happen are people just don't want to live in the real world anymore because the virtual world that the neural link will be able to give them access to is so much more real and engaging and happy than the one we live in. It's hard to say what the future will be with something like this brain machine interface. Um, I, I doubt that we would be able to eliminate all suffering and it actually may be ultimately oddly dystopian if we do eliminate all, all suffering. Um, it, that actually may not be uh, a true utopia. There's probably zero suffering in the Borg virtual reality, and that's why they're such dicks in real life. The possibilities for amazing outcomes are limitless, and the possibilities for like insanely scary outcomes are also limitless. This is like sort of everything that exists, right? Like a knife can be used to defend your life and to feed yourself and to do countless useful things for your survival, or it could kill you in a thousand painful ways. So it's really gonna be up to us and how we use it. And what I like about Neuralink is I wanna have at least my one tiny percentage input into the global thought process of how do we move humanity forward. Would you get it? Would you definitely not get it? What do you think are the craziest, most awesome things that could happen from it or the worst things in the world that could happen from it? I think some people would stand in line right now to get it done and other people would, it could be perfect in a hundred years and they still wouldn't want it done. So I'd like to know which one of those people you are. Please leave me a comment. This is my favorite type of topic to do. I want to hit the cutting edge stuff and explain it in a way that's fun and funny, and, but also super informative. So if I'm doing that, please let me know. If you think I could do better, please tell me how and I would love to make uh, just the best videos I can for you. If you want to watch the full live stream video, it's linked in the description. If you like this video, give me a like, a subscribe. You gotta ask, or it doesn't happen. That's my time. Tip your waist, staff.